news series. Well, all right. Our scripture for this morning can be found in the book of Genesis, the book of New Beginnings, the book of New Beginnings. And I'm going to be reading for you verses 13 through 16. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people. They have filled the earth with their harmful acts. You can be sure that I'm going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ox, an ark out of cypress wood. Make rooms in it. Cover it with tar inside and out. Here is how I want you to build it. The ark has to be 450 feet long. It has to be 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it. Leave the sides of the ark open a foot and a half from the top. Put a door in one side of the ark. Make lower, middle, and upper decks. And then in verse two, it, in verse 22 it says, Noah did everything exactly as God commanded him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right. Today we begin our new welcome series. Each Sunday, our focus will be on a different group we want to welcome here at Old Chapel, with the exception of this Sunday. Today, our focus is going to be on getting ready. Growing up, people were always welcome at our house. The house was always tidy, there was always plenty to eat, and plenty to drink. My parents always greeted people warmly, regardless of whether they had been expecting them or whether they had dropped by on the mouse. They were always ready to welcome. And if we, as a congregation, are going to genuinely welcome people to Old Chapel, then we must be ready. To invite people and not be ready for their arrival is not very welcoming. Would you want someone to show up at your house? Would they find it welcoming that their clothes strewn all over the place and the kitchen is a mess and the bathroom is filthy, filthy and you're just like, welcome, come on in. They're probably thinking, you know, I just stopped by. I don't have to brush on now. That's okay. Looks like you were in the middle of cleaning, or at least you should be. But that's not very welcoming. Likewise, I remember I attended college in New England, one of the nice colleges, you know, in the, in the Northeast, and they needed to increase minority enrollment. They invited me to attend, but by no means was I welcome when I arrived. No accommodations had been made for me to be there. So you know what happened? Their recruitment numbers were great. They welcomed us, they, they, they were great, they had recruited us, they had made it sound really good. But their retention rates were off. Most of us did not stay because we were not welcome when we got there. We don't want that to be what happens here. The same can be true for churches sometimes. They say, oh, we are welcoming but they have made no plans to receive their guests. They say, oh, we don't know why people don't come. I hear it all the time. We are the most, we are the friendliest church ever. Because I've never heard any church say we are not friendly. Not one time have I ever heard a church say we are not friendly and we don't want anyone to come. Not once. Everybody says that we are the friendliest church ever. And in our minds, we really, we really, really are. <laughs> so I told this to the leadership team. And just want to relay this here, because I have found you all to be extremely friendly, and I love all of you. But before I arrived, my husband came to Old Chapel to visit. He came in early, because he's notoriously early. <laughs> so that probably was before the ushers arrived. So there was no one to greet him at the door. He was already sitting down. 
Even when the ushers arrived, no one ever offered them a bulletin. You all welcomed the visitors at the end of worship. So he has sat here in worship the whole time, and not once has anyone ever said anything to them. So you know what his report was when he came back home. <laughs> he didn't say, they are the friendliest people ever. But he did say, after worship, he did say that he was warmly greeted after worship. But that was an hour and a half after he had been here. Some people don't stay for an hour and a half. <laughs> you know, or at least by an hour and a half, they've already made up their mind. that I'm not coming back because I don't find them to be friendly. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. We want to make sure that we are ready for our guests when they arrive. We want to make sure that we have surveyed the community, we know what their interests are, and we are trying to be prepared for them when they get here. We want to make sure that we have not only cleaned up and spruced up the building on the grounds, but inside, outside, and all in between, we are ready. The people are in place to greet and to die. We want to make sure that they know that we are welcome to receive them. So in order for us to be ready, though, we've got to get ready. It just doesn't happen. We all know that the first day of school is coming, but are we ready for it to come? Have we done what we need to do? Have we picked out our clothes in advance? Have we gotten all of our school supplies? Have we done our, have we completed our summer assignments? Do we know where our classroom is and who our teacher is and what the expectations are? Do we have all the information that we need for the first day of school. Are we ready? Just like going to school, Noah is told exactly what he needs to do in order to be ready. I am just really baffled by the amount of detail that God went through to tell Noah. Like, he didn't just say, go get some wood. He said, get cypress wood. And then I need you to get some tar, and I need you to tar it inside and out. Make it exactly 450 feet long. Not 450 and a quarter, not 451, but exactly this long, exactly this wide, exactly this high. Make sure that the door is exactly this far apart. I mean, he went through great detail to tell Noah exactly what he wanted to do. And the scripture tells us that what? Noah did exactly as he was told. Hence, Noah was ready when the flood came. Oh, chapel, we need to get ready. We need to get ready. But in order for us to get ready, we must First, understand for what we are preparing. As a congregation, are we preparing for restoration? To be returned to our original condition. Sometimes churches can't move forward because they're always looking backward, always in the past, reminiscent about the way things used to be and the people who are no longer around here. Truth of the matter is, Yesterday is gone, and it's not going to return. And really, most times when I think about it, the good old the good old days aren't always as good as we're remembering them to be now. Somehow we put the bad parts out, and we're really only remembering the good part, so that they seem like they were the good old days. But if we actually went back in time. We probably see some of the same things that were going on, some of the same challenges as we have today. So no, restoration, that's not it. That's, that's not what we want. We're, we're not trying to return to the way things used to be. That, no, 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 that's not what we're gonna do. So not, not restoration, let's see, let's see. I, I think I have another R. Renovation, that's it. Maybe renovation is what we need. 
So, in renovation, what we do is we replace the old with the new, right? Yes, right. Thank you, Peggy. Oh my God, I'm glad somebody is here this morning. I know it's a holiday weekend, but my gracious. <laughs> so, people renovate their kitchens, and what is they rip out all the cabinets and they get new cabinets. They they rip out all the appliances and they get new stainless steel, whatever they want, and and so they take out all the new and they rip it up and they replace, I mean, tear up all the old and they replace it with the new. But no, 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 we don't, we don't want to do that. We don't want to take away everything that's old because, you know, there's a firm, a firm foundation there and we don't want to tear up our, our foundation. So I hear somebody asking, wait, wait, I hear, it's kind of on the spiritual airway. Somebody said, okay, well, Pastor, if it's not restoration and it's not renovation, what is it exactly are we preparing for? You know what? I'm glad you asked. I was hoping somebody was going to ask that very question. I think it was Taylor. I think it was Taylor who was, who was thinking that. What is it that we're supposed to be doing? We're going to get ready for reformation. What about that? That's a nice, a nice uh, religious term. Reformation. So, you see, we're going to need to make some changes that will improve upon the firm foundation, but not get rid of it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you're killing me this time. <laughs> okay. We are not restoring by returning to all of our old ways. We're not renovating by replacing all of our old ways with new ways, but we are getting ready to refine. I like that word. To refine what we have, what we have been doing so, so that we will be ready to welcome the masses that God is going to send in our way. So like Noah, we must get ready. We need people in place, we need ministries in place, we need systems in place, we need policies and procedures in place. Reformation Church is not easy. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some work, but God wants us to be ready. And it won't happen overnight. We didn't get this place overnight. I look at the weeds, they did not come up last night. Those weeds have been going for a minute right there. But we're going to start getting ready because we're going to go outside on Saturday and start by cleaning up our outside, right? Yes. yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Lord didn't build, build that ark overnight. We have not gotten over here overnight. We have to work diligently. We have to be attentive to following the instructions that the Lord gives us. Because you know, the Lord will tell us exactly what we need to do, right? Uh, yes. The Lord will tell us exactly what we need to do. So the time for us to labor, 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 okay, the time for us to labor is now so that we can reap the reward that God has for us. We have to get ready, church. The time for reformation is now. We will begin to make our improvements. We will be diligent and dedicated to following the instructions that God has given us. Let us get ready to welcome, to truly welcome all to Oak Chapel. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. You all may be work for that one this morning. <laughs>